Wireless Land Professionals podcast, episode 103. Wireless Land Professionals is a place to educate, inform, encourage, and entertain those involved in wireless lands. This Wireless Land Professionals podcast is an audio manifestation of these goals. Our host is a wireless land veteran, consultant, designer, and teacher, Keith Parsons. And now, the podcast for wireless land professionals by wireless land professionals. Welcome back to the Wireless Land Professionals podcast. And in this podcast, we're going to have a couple of really good sections. Uh, the first is a idea about how the community can help drive software development by Adrian Granados. Adrian was the recipient of last year's uh, Wi-Fi Person of the Year at WLPC in Phoenix. Adrian's done a fantastic job of building tools that the industry needs. Followed by a little introduction on from Glenn Kate on blogging in the Wi-Fi world and following up on some uh, sessions he'll be carrying on in future podcasts with us, as well as the interview I did with uh, Manon Lessard on uh, using Slack and how Slack can help build a community in the Wi-Fi world. Stay tuned. Great stuff coming to you in this episode. 10 Talks. Here's another short, high-energy presentation from our Wireless Land Professionals Conferences. Uh, I'm Adrian Granados. Um, I'm, a develop I'm the developer of Wi-Fi Explorer and other Wi-Fi tools. Uh, some of you know me. Uh, if, you run if, if you have Windows, well, maybe you don't. Um, what I want to do today is to talk about how the community, this great community, has helped me shaped and uh, it has influenced the development of my tools. Uh, just to give you a little background, um, I, I come from an academic environment. I've uh, been on research for the past, I don't know, 10 years. I've uh, been working with ad hoc networks uh, for tactical environments, uh, Army, Air Force, that type of stuff. Uh, I've been dealing with ad hoc routing protocols, uh, Trans optimization of transport protocols, wireless and wired emulators, stuff like that. Well, I started coding the Wi-Fi tools back in uh, 2009, and when I and I did it as a hobby. And when I the first the first app I wrote, I said, "Well, I I know Wi-Fi," and then I it turns out that I didn't. <laughs> um, so when I when then these tools started to become a uh, let's say popular, then uh, I started finding some real gaps in my knowledge. So the way I approached that was by going to Twitter, going to blogs, podcasts, uh, reading the CWNP study guides. And last year I had the opportunity to come to the WLPC conference, and which was of a great thing for me. Um, one of the main challenges, though, that I've been dealing, dealing with is I uh, have no enterprise experience. So at the beginning, people were talking to me about controllers and uh, Cisco stuff and Meraki stuff and all that thing, and I was, well, I don't know what's that. Twitter has been of great help. Um, it's a tool that I use to engage with the community. I use it to identify the needs of the Wi-Fi community, to observe and learn about the trends, get inspiration ideas, get valuable feedback answers, and very importantly, it helps spread the word. Um, one of the very nice things is this Wi-Fi question that Leap uh, does every day. It's a great resource. Uh, it's, uh, they have great discussions and do you have there one example here where he was asking about the spectrum analyzers? So this is Wi-Fi Explorer. This was version 1.0. It was early 2012. I was not on Twitter. This is the latest version 2.1. And I can say that mostly is a result of being a full-time Twitter user. Um, and let me explain later why, what that means. Um, so this this app is a utility to scan, monitor, troubleshoot wireless networks. Um, it's, it has a graphical visualization of the environment. Um, I don't know. I mean, 
has a lot of details. Uh, the idea is that it's when you open it, you know, it's a very simple interface, but it lets you uh, get uh, deeper into the details of the networks. Um, and this is what I what I meant by the, uh, it was a result of Twitter. All these names you see there, it's people that one way or another have helped me with the tool, either testing it or suggesting features or you know saying, hey, this is wrong, this is not correct, or hey, I go to Twitter and I say, hey, how do you do this? Uh, why is this uh, you know the case? Is this correct? And all that help has helped me build this tool. So I have a couple of other tools. One of them is Wi-Fi Signal. It's a system menu bar app uh, uh, to get easy access to Wi-Fi connection details. You can get SSI, noise, SNR, and other things. And again, it's, uh, it has various configuration options. It's, and the idea is that you open it. It's very simple, but if you, you, know, you want to know the MCS index, then you have it there. And those Twitter handles are also people who have helped me. AirTool, this, this is kind of a special tool. It's very simple. But what I like about it is that it came out of me attending the conference last year. I saw a couple of presentations of people doing captures on Mac, going to the command line, typing all these commands. And I said, well, there must be a better way to do it. So. I wrote this up a few weeks later after attending the conference, and the very first version you know, was very simple. Then Mike helped me a lot with suggesting, hey, you should do this, you should do that. It's easier to, you can make captures quicker if you do this. OK, let's, let's try it. And, uh, so a way to give back to the community, I made this tool for free. So you can go to my website, get it. It's actually, I think, on the USB key of the conference. So what's next? And uh, I would say that's on you, because um, most of the things that, I, that I've been doing is because I, you approach me and say, hey, would it be nice if we can do this, things like that. So, so tools continue to evolve thanks to the input. Again, Twitter, blogs, podcasts, uh, the conference. I'm actually working on this new product, this Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. It has an spectrum analyzer integration. It, uh, right now, it works with WiSpy and R the RF Explorer, um, possibly R HackRF later. I don't know, I have to buy one to start with. Um, it has passive scanning, which allows you to see hidden networks, which is something you cannot do right now in the current version because of the limitations of the APIs I have to use. And I'm planning other features, like since I can do passive scanning now, I can get, you know, the clients that are associated with RIP, maybe list those two. I could, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do better filtering and uh, more views to help you troubleshoot networks. Um, and at some point, I maybe should realize that this is not a hobby anymore. Uh, it's, I, have, I do have a full-time job as, uh, in a university, so this is kind of my side thing. Uh, but it's taking a lot of time, and I would really enjoy it. I mean, I wish I could do this 24-7. So thank you. That's my website. Wireless LAN blog reviews with Glenn Kate. A closer look at some of our favorite Wi-Fi blogs and their authors. Well, Glenn, welcome to the new show. It's good to have you here. Hey, well, thank you, Matthew. I appreciate the invitation to come on and talk a little bit uh, about Wi-Fi stuff. So uh, awesome. thanks again. Now, we talked about, um, I know you have your blog that kind of talks about blogging. And we're going to be doing that segment as part of the, the new show format. Um, but before we get into that, for those who don't know Glenn, Kate, tell them a little bit about yourself. What's your, your background in Wi-Fi? What are you doing now? Okay. Hey. Well. Well. Thanks again. The uh, it's really kind of been a neat uh, IT career I've had. Um, 
kind of go back a couple of different uh, job positions. So I worked for 18 years as, a, as an IT professional with a uh, large power utility that was headquartered in West Central Florida and really uh, enjoyed that. Um, but I had to make a job change. My job was shipped to, to the headquarters in North Carolina. I didn't want to move with it. And I had had some contacts in Wi-Fi, was doing a little bit of Wi-Fi work there for that utility. And and this operator came up with a VAR, and I said, I, mean, I can do full-time Wi-Fi with this VAR? And he said, cool. yeah. So I said, cool. So I jumped into that. <laughs> and wow, man, I just had all kinds of opportunities to work with this VAR. I did, uh, did work in a lot of different verticals, warehousing and office work, hospital, um, just point-to-point work. So I had all kinds of opportunities. And then that sort of came to a close uh, about six months ago. And then another opportunity came up, uh, work as a Wi-Fi engineer with a, uh, a large IT distributing firm oh, that's cool. uh, my area. So that opened up, and I've been with that job now uh, just really about a month. Okay. And um, getting all kinds of experience doing that. So I just love Wi-Fi. Um, I, I still remember when I was working with Power Utility, someone hands me this this PCMCIA uh, card that when laptops, hey, this does – does wireless i said it does what's wireless is that i don't know plug it in your laptop and go figure it out so i did <laughs> and i think i was bitten you're still by figuring that. it out right i still am i don't think i have the card anymore but or what, uh, it's like what you say on your blog uh it should be pretty easy because there's no wires right yeah absolutely yeah how hard can it be there's no wires right and, but, and you're different uh uh you said you had different verticals that you ended up being able to be exposed to did you have one that stood out as as your favorite or was there an application that you really did enjoy or one that you hated yeah well actually one thing that was really kind of fun um we had to redo um the entire library system uh wi-fi at a uh it's the third largest county in the state of florida okay. and there was over 28 library branches and i don't know i just love libraries i love books right yeah. so i had a chance to go in there and and they always said can you make the Wi-Fi better? I said, well, I don't know if I can make it better, but we're going to do a good shot at it. And uh, that was kind of fun because I've actually gone back to some of those libraries and gone through and I see the SSID of the APs cool. that they've installed. So that was kind of fun to see that, get the library system up and going. So yeah. that's that stands out, but just, uh, just lots of fun things I like to do with yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's why I guess they call us nerds matthew you know they just said uh, you guys just love to talk about wi-fi i said yeah makes us wi-fi engineers so anyway well speaking of your blog and wi-fi engineers this combo of wi-fi engineer and blogging what is that all about why is that a passion of yours and why is that important yeah, well, well, you know, um, I, I've talked with several uh, WLAN engineers, some who um, work with uh, the WLAN Pros pod, uh, you know, website here, and uh, we all kind of have the same idea. We think all Wi-Fi engineers need to blog, and um, I, I guess maybe there's three or four reasons why I would say that I really personally believe every WLAN engineer needs to blog, and maybe first of all, if we can say you can journal your Wi-Fi career That's with good. a blog. Um, another thing is you can tech, develop your technical writing ability as you blog. You really think through what am I trying to say and what am I trying to um, you know, present here. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you can document Wi-Fi testing you perform. And we're all doing some testing. We all have Wi-Fi labs. Or if you don't have a Wi-Fi lab, you want one at your home, right? <laughs> and uh, so how do you document that stuff? Well, blog gives you a great a platform for doing that. And uh, I guess lastly is that I, the Wi-Fi community isn't as huge as like the route switch community and okay. the other IT community. So a lot of Wi-Fi engineers, I mean, we know each other, it seems like. We follow each other on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, things like that. Uh, and so sort of like I want to give back to the Wi-Fi community. They have given so much to me in my career and helping me develop to this point. Um, just want to give back. And so those are some reasons why I really think that uh, – Every Wi-Fi engineer needs to blog. How's that? Well, what if, um, you know, you immediately think of a blog and it's it's real popular now just in the world of, of entrepreneurs. and But there's so many blogs out there. Why does the world need another blog? And specifically, why do they need another Wi-Fi blog? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good reason. Yeah, you know, along with that, you're probably going to say, um, uh, no one's going to read this exactly. blog. Why, why in the world am I going to do this? No one's going to read it. And you know, that's really true. At first, probably no one will read it. It's uh, it's like me. I start out my blog. No one's going to read my blog. You know, and, But uh, remember, the, when we start out a blog, we're not really – I guess we could 
say in a way it's a bit selfish. You're doing it for you. Mm-hmm. You're learning to develop your technical writing abilities. You're doing this to do, to document your testing. Yeah. Um, you're doing this to just put down information that you found out. But um, you think that a blog isn't that popular? No one's going to read it. And I still remember just here's the true story. Uh, I have a friend who uh, actually I met him through this blog. Um, he wanted to develop uh, how to use Echo House Site Survey with a GPS unit. And I said, hey, I've got to do this for an outdoor survey over in Central Florida, so I need to find out how to do it. He had just started his blog. That's great. He put this out. I went through the d- details. Uh, and he, and again, this was like his second or third blog he had put out. He put out the information, and that's exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. And so I, I read through the blog, did the information, and voila, there I'm going. I'm out using Echo Site Survey with the GPS doing uh, site surveys outdoors. That's right, yeah, because the chances of something that you face, someone else is facing the same issue. So if you're doing it, write it down and share. Well, exactly, and that's the neat thing about Wi-Fi blogs. It's yeah, you, know, you can go through tons and tons of just technical documentation from this vendor and that vendor, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's really dull and dry. But someone who's actually gone through the process, hey, this is what I learned. These are some of the obstacles I ran into, yeah. and they put it down for it. It's much more readable and it's much more personal. So there's just another thing. Hey, you're giving back to the Wi-Fi engineers that's because yeah, it's some peer to peer. So okay, yeah, yeah. someone says, "Great, Glenn, awesome. Where do they start?" Yeah, that's a, that's a good question too, Matthew. Um, well, you know, I, I tell people start out small and start out simple. Uh, you don't need one of these elaborate, you know, twenty tab blogs. Uh, in fact, if it's too <laughs> elaborate, it's kind of hard to find your way around, right? Yeah. So, hey, there's some real simple starter blog sites. There's WordPress.com, Blogspot.com, Postatch.io, and there's some others out there as well. Um, but this will get you up and set up, start blogging the same day. Uh, Now, if you're good at coding HTML and you can run your own blog site, well, go for that. But uh, for me, I'm not an HTML coder, so I just uh, use one of these. I think I use Mm WordPress.com to start mine. And uh, start out small. It doesn't have to be a 10-page blog. Uh, Just put down an idea, something you've done. Maybe you did something simple like, hey, I just wanted to put a packet capture out there on that uh, you know, if you hide an SSID, you don't see the beacon, and you if you broadcast the SSID, you see the beacon. You put two packet captures. I said, hey, this is what I learned. Well, that's, that's cool. Good. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. So, pick a topic, write a few paragraphs about it, add a graphic or two, and publish it. And then when you do your first blog, you know, put it up on Twitter and LinkedIn. Tell other people, hey, I've got a blog out there. I want you to read it. And then you are now a Wi-Fi blogger. Yeah. You're, you're team yeah and in our little community too it's like a simple blog and twitter those are the two tools you need just get your twitter account and a simple blog post and it's so popular nowadays i mean literally you can go to google and say how do i start a free blog and you're gonna have video tutorials more than you (laughs) could ever wish to know (laughs) yep yep you're right it's kind of interesting that when you look at the history of blogging it started out, you know, weblog or these web journals, and it was kind of an IT, more geeky thing where they were sharing knowledge and just wanted this place. And then, of course, everyone saw the potential of how good a blog can be, and it took off. But it's almost like we're going back to the roots of what blogs started out as. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, along, along that lines, is people say, well, what, what do I start writing about? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to write about. And so, well, I just gave you one topic, you know. How do you do a packet capture? Here's what happens when you hide the SSID. Here's when you broadcast it. So, but but just go to your your heart. I mean, what is your passion in Wi-Fi? I mean, most people who are listening to this broadcast kind of like Wi-Fi. They're in the career because they enjoy it. Um, and, and to me, it's I'm passionate about the the, the technology. I love it. Yeah. Um, so tell people, tell people why you like it. Um, uh, is it and what do you specifically like about Wi-Fi? Is it the design? Is it troubleshooting, packet capture, outdoor mesh? I mean, man, I love antennas. I could probably blog about antennas mm-hmm. all the time because they have such a, an outreach in Wi-Fi. If you're in a warehousing or uh, trying to shoot down. Uh, in, control uh, RF in a uh, in a hotel type yeah. situation there's all kinds of stuff so blog about what you love you know, to uh, in the in the technique in the career and uh, just you know put out there your your first blog and and as I said when you put out your first blog please put it up on Twitter put it up on Instagram let people Get know feedback yeah when yeah, I've yeah, noticed yeah. at the conferences uh, talking to Wi-Fi engineers uh, there's no shortage of 
opinions and thoughts about things. So oh, <laughs> just, just yeah, get there, there yourself you on your own little tangent. You should have plenty of blog material. Yep. Yep. So you, you get it. expertise. Is there anything else, you know, what's in it for me? Um, yeah. You know, it, cause it, there's time involved. Oh yeah. You know, yeah what am I getting out of this? Yeah. And you know, the thing about it is that how, boy, it takes a lot of time. It seems like, but I think all the stuff that you gain out of doing a blog, you, uh, again, you, you really hone your thought processes when you begin to write technically. Now, there is no VAR out there cannot use an engineer who knows how to mm-hmm. express their thoughts logically and write detailed with technical ability. Um, and, and then, I, as I said before, you can highlight your your, your Wi-Fi career. Uh, I go back and read my first blogs. I said, who was this person? And... Uh, <laughs> But I, but I've seen, I've seen progression in my blogging, and I've uh, seen ways that I have improved. I've yeah. seen it kind of track my career. So again, that's a, that's a neat thing. And and again, you, you, I, I say it's selfish, but you, you're you're doing this for you to build your career. But others will start tagging on. Just as I said, my friend who showed me how to use Echo House Site Survey with with a GPS device. Well, he wasn't doing that necessarily for all people, but he helped me. Yeah. And so by your blog. They're going to be able to help other people in their career. And you may think, well, who's going to read this and stuff? Again, you know, people will read your blogs. Keep on blogging. Keep on going yeah. through it. Ask for feedback. People will give you some positive comments. Take the positive and the negative comments along the same time. And uh, just keep blogging and keep writing. And uh, it would be amazing. Um, yeah, what, and, what and it's say. like, um, you know, you think about the heartbeat of WLAMPros.com and the conferences is – building better engineers, better Wi-Fi, having better standards. And this is one of those ways that we progress towards that end is the more we all as a community are sharing and getting feedback through a blog, the better Wi-Fi becomes, you know, for the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, How often do you think would be a good amount of time to be blogging like per week, per month? What do you recommend? (laughs) That's, that's a good question. It's hard to say. Um, I know some people blog once a year. I don't think that's enough. Um, but that being said, you, know, so you should try to blog regularly. It's it's a it's a bit of a, of a discipline you have to do. You know, mm-hmm. it, put it in your Outlook calendar, put it on your you know Google Mail, whatever you have to do to remind you regularly. So every six weeks, every two months, you can get a blog out. And it, it, when when people first start blogging, Matthew, it's like, oh, I've got tons of ideas to put them out. And then <laughs> then you you sort of hit the brick wall. So, oh, what do I blog about now? So my suggestion is uh, you can do this in WordPress. You can do this in other blogs. I see. Start at what I call a blog hopper. Okay, it's an idea. For example, yeah. uh, here's the title. What I want to talk about. I want to talk about data rates. And two or three ideas and just put it in there and save it as, as a draft and you'll see a number of things in, in the hopper. So go back to that hopper from time to time and say, hey, there's I got some more ideas for this. I got a concept from a, you know, a seminar I saw yeah. or something I worked into at work and you can develop your blog. So, um, you know, case so, studies is good, too, you know, as long as you're not violating confidentiality and that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, Things that you're running into are complaints that customers give you. That's a great place to start with a blog topic. Yep, absolutely. I've, uh, I think I've got a blog out there, or I went. Um, we talked about a little bit what I call the um, uh, the worst Wi-Fi deployment <laughs> I've ever done, and uh, so, and, but the but again, lessons learned from there, and so I had a chance to share that recently. So yeah, um, the, your experiences. That's a way to blog about something you've learned. And, uh, you know, what's what's your passion? What do you like to write about? You know, put those things in your hopper and uh, get, get some blogs going. I, I'm assuming I know the answer to this question already, but when should someone start? Okay. Well, that is the easiest question you've asked me in this seminar or this webinar here. And that started this week. That's good. Go out to one of those websites, set it up. And just start blogging. It, it, get it out today. If you can, if you're listening to this, go out to one of those websites and just start out a very simple blog. It doesn't have to be 20 pages, just two or three paragraphs. This is what I learned, and this is why, or here's my passion yeah. about why, why I love the technique. Lots of things you can do. And again, put it up on Twitter, let others know about it, and tell them you want their feedback. That's good. Okay, so we you said... Um... I asked the question, why do engineers need to blog? 
what else? Kind of give me a sum up of all of this. We've talked about a lot of things. Oh, yeah, we really have. Um, again, I, I think engineers, Wi-Fi engineers need to blog so they can journal your Wi-Fi career. You can see where you have progressed. Um, it also helps develop your ability to write technically and logically. And again, there isn't a company out there that isn't looking for someone who can do that. That's this good. helps you develop those skills. Uh, it docufy, documents the Wi-Fi testing that you're doing in your lab. And uh, the last thing is that I, and I just really believe every Wi-Fi engineer I've talked to wants to do this. They want to give back to the online Wi-Fi community. They just sometimes don't know how to do it. Yeah, so yeah. blogging is a good way to do that. And lastly, here's if you don't have a blog, start <laughs> one today. There you go. That's great. Well, Glenn, thanks again for being part of the show. Thanks for coming in and talking about you know your two passions, it sounds like, is – Wi-Fi in general, and then, of course, this whole subject of blogging. Um, and we look forward, we're going to be, you're going to be doing some reviews for us. I know we, we actually got a few in the can already, so those will be coming forward. Um, Glenn, again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Hey, well, thank you, Matthew, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And um, I just want to remind all the WLAN professionals out there to keep on Wi-Fi blogging in the free world. <laughs> all right. On. Thank you, yeah. Glenn. Okay. Hey, bye for now. Bye. Well, welcome. I'm here with uh, Manon Lessard. Did I get the last name right? Yes, you did. Ooh, ooh. And I'm, I don't even speak French. Uh, we're, we're here at, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Happen to be attending uh, Devin Aiken CWAP class together. And I thought I'd take this chance to, to interview you and talk a little bit about your involvement in Wi-Fi, a little bit about your journey, and we can end up talking a little bit about Slack. Is that okay? Sure. Great. I don't get to interview many French-Canadian women. There are not that many in Wi-Fi, yeah. aside from me. I, you're, you're like the one, so that's, that's good. Uh, I'm glad I've got you here. Thank so you. So tell me, how did you get involved in Wi-Fi? Oh, my God. I, well, I started getting involved in networking first, and then we had this big project of having a Wi-Fi deployment uh, on campus, and my architect um, needed a hand, and I decided to get involved in, in, in the, not in the design, but in the maintenance and the post-implementation side of things. And I, I fell in love with it. Well, it, there's a lot to love there. We, we all love Wi-Fi. So uh, you fell in love with it. And then how did, you, how did you get involved in the community? Well, all that started by a project at work again. Um, great guy called uh, Steve Williams. I think you know Steve, right? Uh, told me about uh, Andrew and you and Devin and the classes he had taken with you. And I started getting involved on Twitter and then started talking with Lee and then got to WLBC. Oh, yeah, Lee's, Lee's another edu kind of guy, so I can see how you guys could relate. Yeah. And, uh, and your, your size network's the same size as Lee's? Pretty much. He has more APs than I do. Uh, and he has more uh, budget, too. <laughs> how many how many uh, client associations do you have on a normal day? Well, our peak as of now, this year, is 23,000 users, concurrent users. But campus sees... I've never looked at how many people associate daily, honestly. I only but look at But 22,000 concurrent, that's still a lot of people. Yeah. On um, six, con six controllers. How many APs? Uh, 1,600. That's a decent-sized network. Not bad. Do, do you have uh, Lee's love for uh, bugs? I usually ping him before I do a code upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, should we or should we not do this upgrade? Yeah, well, you know, um, there's, there's this great... Um, email uh, list uh, uh, the Educos wireless group so you hear a lot about it there and then I'm a maniac bug scrubber I've been burned before namely on, on my mother's birthday um, that upgrade I think took over 15 hours to complete so that was not that, a good birthday that was not a good birthday so um, anywho um, that upgrade burnt me pretty bad ever since I've been like reading all the release notes, pinging my SE, pinging uh, the community, looking at Twitter, 
Googling bugs and whatnot. I'm I'm a maniac. My SC knows that about me, so. Well, it sounds like it's kept you safer. Yeah, that and a lot of legacy devices. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always a good way to keep stuff really old. Well, the reason I wanted to talk to you today was uh, about Slack. Yep. So a lot of people uh, know about Twitter. Hopefully more know about Twitter. We're trying to, to you know, it's, it, Twitter's the way a lot of us got involved in the community. Um, and then you decided to start a Slack channel. Tell us a little bit about the genesis of, of how that rolled out. Well, I got involved on Twitter uh, after a lot more after it, attending WLPC. And then I, well, you guys had an election in, in the U.S. and the political chatter started. And it was really unfortunate because there's a lot of people that I, that I would follow, but there was so much noise surrounded. The signal to noise ratio got really bad, so to speak. And so, so you had I to lower was, your MCS rate. <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't I couldn't read my Twitter feed, and hear all that you know, and he, see people that I know and that I appreciate bash at each other for something that doesn't have to do with Wi-Fi and um, so I got involved in the Wireless LAN uh, advisory board a Wireless LAN uh, association and they had a Slack uh, channel for uh, their meetings and so that's how I got involved on Slack and then one day um, Sam Clemens was uh, talking about how it's really too bad that Twitter is getting so political and, you know, you get everybody's views on whatever when all you're really looking for is that golden nugget of information on Wi-Fi. And so he said, I wish there was someone that could start a Slack channel. So I turned around and I said, okay, let's start one. And that's how it got started. So I sent him an invite for the channel and then... The rest is history. So how many people are on the, the Slack channel now? We're around, I'd say, around 200. 200? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, having been on it, it's uh, quite active on a, on a daily basis. I see yep. the updates there. Uh, somewhat, what, is, what are some of the benefits of Slack over Twitter? Well, you don't get the character um, limitation. And I, I find it easier to read. And like, if you have to DM someone about something he said, you can just comment whatever they said directly underneath. It's easier to read. Um, and you get like, you have people that are gonna send out information. They're they're working with Cisco or Aruba or Rukus or Ubiquity, uh, whichever. And they they know their stuff real well. And sometimes, you know, especially when you're in a multi-vendor environment, you're looking for like a little bit of information on one thing in particular. So we have separate channels for every vendor. So how many, what are the total channel count you have? I lost count. I don't know, it fills the whole left side of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like when it comes up, if there's an unread one, you can just sort and see just the unread ones together. Yes, yes, and they're, they're, um, they're in bold characters to tell you that there was action there and and if there's something for me it shows up a little red dot mm -hmm. so and slack's available with uh, ios android windows mac there's, yeah, a, there's cross, a client for across it. platforms yeah. yeah um what are the downsides of slack well a thing uh that we're about to push out is an official set of policies that we have because i mean it's like back in the days on the IRC channels, so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of people that there's, and you can't watch and read everything. Now, that's that's the downside of it, and some people have uh, expressed concern that we were so stiff on the rules and stiff on the on the registering um, to our group um, about the rules. Well, you know, we don't want to get lawsuits. This is all free. I do it with, uh, Sam's, uh, an administrator, an administrator. And, so uh, you two are the administrators. That yeah. doesn't mean you curate the account though. People, anyone can post what they want. That doesn't go through you along the way. Exactly. So that's, that's why we want to, um, set the 
ground rules really clearly so that we don't get sued for trying to do a service to the community. And um, So what are, what are the ground rules? What are, what are the things people need to remember when they come on the Slack channel? Well, basically, uh, this, is, this is all for free. People are participating uh, as much or as little as they want. Um, this is a public channel, so you know you can't really do stuff. Speak of stuff that's NDA. Um, you can't. Um, we don't want you to promote your employer, quote unquote, if you're working for a vendor. Um, we don't want vendor on va- vendor bashing. Um, that would be called vendor on vendor violence. VVV. Oh, VVV. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> Marcus Burton happened to have coined the term VVV, and so we, we stick with vendor-on-vendor vendor violence. Yeah, or love, I don't know. Or love. Love's good. <laughs> love's better. So um, those are the things that we don't want to see. Um, there's also, you know, whatever you got from training that you paid for. Everything that's bound by... Um, I can't remember. Mean the like the PowerPoint slides or something. You don't want people sharing those directly. Yeah, yeah. And like... Um, um, I'm thinking of droit d'auteur. I'm sorry. Um, And I have no idea what that sounds French, though. (laughs) It is French. Um, Anyways, your rights to a document. Um, We don't want you to violate those uh, those those rights. Yeah, you can't share someone else's copyright. That's the word copyright. I was looking for. Yeah. So yeah, I was looking for copyright. Did I learn how to say dwaddledah? Droit d'auteur. An author is an uh, auteur. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> copyright. Yes. So anyway, uh, so we don't want to see like stuff being given away for free when someone worked really hard to develop or write it or you know tape But it. But it. It, it does allow with the without the character limit, people can can write paragraphs at a time about things. Yeah, and you can also edit whatever you said. So if something is not as accurate or mistyped or if like... I, I need that because I mistype all the time. Yeah, well... Or it's, it's not me. It's not me. I don't mistype. iOS does when I just, you know, it changes for me automatically. Uh-huh. That's my story. Okay. And you're sticking to I'm it? sticking to that <laughs> one. So what's the future hold for the Slack channel? Well, I hope I get uh, maybe a a way of, of having people because th- there's there's another limitation we didn't address. Um, I didn't open the, the group to everyone, and you have to ping either me or Sam to get in uh, with your email address because I didn't want uh, the channel to um, be. So it's not flooded, like fully, flooded with fully like, public. They, you have to like request access. You have to request access, but it's. I mean, the info is public domain, but you have to request access. And there's a way to automate that. I've been looking into it. It's not working as well as I wish it was. So right now you have so to actually go in and, and like yes, okay, approve or something. I have to register you every like uh, and everyone that asks for access manually. So how would someone, if they're not currently on your Slack channel, join? Well, there's one thing. Um, if your friend, you've already um, subscribed to the, to the channel, and your friend would really like to get an invite, um, he is better off trying to ping me or Sam Clemens um, with their email address. We don't really like to invite people without them knowing. And, you know, all of a sudden so you... friend of a friend kind of thing. Yeah, friend of a friend, you know. Why don't you put... Like, no, I got this friend. We let him in. Yeah, I got this friend. Well, you know, uh, we should get this guy. You know, we could get, we should get George or we could, sh- we could get, like, Eddie on the channel. It'd be really good because he has this opinion on something. And, you know, we, we have to so, request people's permission. So if someone's not permission. on the channel... And they want to join. They can email you or Sam Clements. Yeah, well, you know, they can DM me. They can DM uh, Sam Clements. On Twitter? On Twitter. Okay. Uh, they can email us and as well. And on Twitter, your name is? Um, at May149. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's in remembering. And I'll put Sam Cam- Clements in there. So, But to DM you, you that means you have to follow them. They have to follow you. So there's a kind of a little step there. Yeah. Is there... Um, 
should we put your email address in? They can email you directly, or should we have a friend of a friend kind of thing? Well, started? yeah, we could put the, the email address in the show notes, and they can ping me, or and I'll ask Sam if he's okay if we if we put his email as well. So, what's uh, what's your goal? How many people do you think can, should be on the Slack channel for Wireless Land? I don't know. I mean, uh, it's hundreds, a quote, to, thousands. To quote you, you know, I see it as as you say, you know, knowledge is like manure. As <laughs> I love that quote. <laughs> so, you know, as as many as we want. The spread, sky's the limit. Spread it around. The thinner you spread it, the less it smells. So, yeah, I think I think we should spread it around a lot. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. I enjoy our, our dinner together, and uh, we'll get this up on uh, the podcast. Anything you want to say to the Wireless Land community? I have no words. You guys have shared I'll, so much. I'll make, I'll make it easier. If there is one thing you could change in how 802.11 works, what would it be? Honestly? Aside from what we saw today, that all those fields that are useless in the, <laughs> in the, headers, yeah. in the headers, nothing really. Well, that's a good answer. You, she's in love that's with 802.11 just the way it is. We like yeah. that. <laughs> well, thanks for your time, Em. My pleasure. Wireless LAN terminology. Do you know what this word means? Antenna gain. The gain of an antenna is a measure of the antenna's ability to direct or focus radio energy over a region of space. High gain antennas have a more focused radiation pattern in a specific direction. This has been episode 103 of Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast. Thanks for sticking right through the end. We had uh, a great module from uh, Adrian Granados on community-driven development. We had an introduction to wireless blogging with Glenn Kate. And finally, an uh, interview I had with Manon on using Slack to build a community. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast. The podcast for wireless LAN professionals by wireless LAN professionals. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Wireless LAN Pros for all the latest news and updates. And also connect directly with Keith on Twitter at Keith R. Parsons. Head over to www.wlandpros.com for this episode's show notes, as well as the latest in all things Wi-Fi.